I briefly want to go through uh, 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 just two questions here briefly from uh, some past papers. I want to look at physical sciences paper 1, grade 12, 2015. The last question, question 11, which is of usually the photoelectric effect or something related to the photoelectric, like photoelectric effects such as absorption and emission. So let us start. Question 11. In an experiment to demonstrate the photoelectric effect, light of different wavelengths was shown onto a metal surface of a photoelectric cell. So, all you're trying to understand what you're reading. So, in an experiment to demonstrate the photoelectric effect, light of different wavelengths was shown onto a metal surface of a met of photoelectric cell. So, you have a metal surface and you have a light source or f and different light wavelengths of the same light source. So, and then now, the ma and now when that experiment was done, the results that we recorded was a maximum kinetic energy of the emitted electrons was determined for the various wavelengths and the maximum kinetic energy of the emitted electrons was recorded and is long uh, and the inverse of the wavelength was recorded by the way this inverse of the wavelength it has a name it's usually called in the wave number but you don't need to know this by now in metric i'm just letting you know that it has some physical meaning to some extent but anyway so here we have the table of the inverse of wavelengths and we have the maximum kinetic energy of these electrons and we've looked at what these maximum kinetic energy is so now we want to define the photo the first question is that what is meant by the term photoelectric effect i'm going to define it again as i would define it the photoelectric effect is a phenomenon in which light of a sufficient incident of a sufficient frequency is shown or is made incident on a metal on a metal surface and electrons are emitted from the surface that's a sufficient or moderate or good definition of photoelectric effect because we've mentioned that light that be, light is being shown number one number two we've mentioned that the light has to have a sick frequency and number Three, we mentioned what is the effect of shining the light of the right frequency, which is electrons being emitted. Now, the next thing they ask us to do is to draw a graph of the ki maximum kinetic energy y-axis versus the inverse of the wavelength. And, of course, here you would have just draw this on the x-axis, this on the y-axis. Of course, don't forget to label your axes and put the units and put a title for your table so I believe that should be good enough for you now I, I hope that you can do question 11.2 which is just drawing this you should be provided with grass paper but even if you are not you should be able to come up with the system to just plot these points um, by grade, in grade 12 you should have that skill of plotting graphs from a table so moving on, question 11.3.1, it says use a graph to determine the threshold frequency of the metal in the photoelectric cell. So when you have this graph paper, when you have this graph paper, you to get the threshold frequency of the metal, um, you, you will probably need to extrapolate the graph. And when you, if you want to identify the threshold frequency from the graph, you just have to recall what is the definition of the threshold frequency. The threshold frequency is the minimum frequency of required for light to emit, um, to require, uh, required for light to emit, uh, 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 um, electrons. So it means it's the lowest frequency when uh, 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 are the very first you know the very first photoelectron is emitted so you would extrapolate your point let me look for this and try to, I'm trying to try to show you I think I have a memo for this so that you can get an idea so that you can get an idea of what I mean by extrapolate um, so 
so yes this is a graph so you will have to plot these points and of course you would probably end there but extrapolate the points and your threshold frequency would be this point here because here you have the wavelength I mean so you have the light source you have some frequency basically and EK max is zero because it's the very first you know this is a very first or just before any photoelectron is emitted so so this is a threshold frequency from the graph when you extrapolate it you can get your threshold frequency and I've done it here I just want to show you my calculations so this was the first question I was answering physical science paper 1 grade 12 year 2015 final paper this was a definition of the photoelectric effect so here we want to find this is where we are now we want to find the threshold frequency so we can use this expression here c equals f times lambda f0 is a, th is a threshold frequency lowest frequency that can emit light that can emit electrons now what i want to sh move on to is the next question how can we use this graph here this graph to obtain Planck's constant now you have to remember this expression energy of a photon hf equals hc 1 over f 1 over lambda i mean um so then e times 1 over lambda um so so we we want to find we want to show that the grade we we we, we want to find the the um we want to find the, the the Planck's constant from the graph and Planck's constant we find it from the gradient of the graph and I want to show you how we got to that so if you look at this expression you have here equals hf and we write it in this form remember on the graph you have e as a y variable and one over lambda as a x variable so this should remind you of something this should remind you if e is a y variable and one over lambda is a is a x as on the x axis i hope that you can see that it remind you of y equals mx plus c with the c here being zero so this is synonymous to y equals mx and this was what i was writing here that let us think of e as a, f a function of one over lambda which current remind should remind us of f of x so e of one over lambda so the e here is synonymous with the f and the one over lambda here is synonymous with the x so then whatever is behind front of the one over lambda which is synonymous with the x is just the gradient so hc is the gradient and we find it like and this is what i was explaining here so you can get planck's constant from this graph through the gradients because you would work out the gradient which is equal to hc and then divide by c on both sides and then that's how you would get an approximation or an estimation of Planck's constant so then now I would like to just visit the other paper which is um, which is just wait a minute um, which is uh, let me just open my notes again we just want to open uh just wait a minute hang in there we want to open not the notes not the memo ah uh, there's my notes here okay so we want to open physical science paper one grade 12 i made a mistake that's a typo physical science paper one grade 12 from the year 2016 and it should be this one so question 10 the last question a learner is investigating the photoelectric effect for two different material for two different metal silver and sodium using light of different frequencies so we we're looking at the photoelectric effect for two different metals sodium and silver 
and be using light of different frequencies. The maximum kinetic energy of the photo emitted photoelectrons is plotted against the frequency of the light of each of the metals as shown below. So we, we, we've got, we, we have recorded the energies or we obtained values for the energies and we're measuring them against the frequency. So define the term min, um, threshold frequency. We've said the threshold frequency is the minimum frequency of light required for light to emit photoelectrons. We've done that. I think I have that in my notes here as well. The threshold frequency is the minimum frequency required for incident light to emit photoelectrons. Good. Which metal, sodium or silver, has a large work function? Remember what is the work function? The minimum amount of energy required for light source to emit photoelectrons. So now, which metal, sodium or silver, has a larger work function? Sodium metal uh the metal sodium or silver so if we look at these values here we see that sodium has a lower frequency than silver and remember we said um energy and frequency are directly proportional according to the electromagnetic spectrum work function is an energy um uh physical physical const uh physical yeah physical value so if work function is an energy and um, so silver here has a higher frequency so silver should have the higher uh, work function and you can also rationalize this mathematically or you, yeah mathematically if you look at this expression the work function equals h F and the F here is the, min, the threshold frequency. You can see they're directly proportional. The higher the threshold frequency or the higher the frequency, the higher the work function. So that's why silver is the correct answer. Name the physical constant represented by the slopes of these graphs. So if you want to look at the slopes of these graphs, the change in energy divided by the change in frequency. So you want to know what physical constant is represented. So the slope is that change in kinetic energy over the change in frequency. And from this, we just want to recall our expression here. Is that if we solve for H, is that E over F gives us H. So then, the slope here is re representing Planck's constant. Because we're dividing energy over frequency. Joules over inverse seconds which is just joules joule seconds which is a unit for um Planck's constant so moving forward next question if the light of the same frequency is shown on each of the metals in which metals will the ejected photoelectrons have a larger maximum kinetic energy that correct answer will of course be sodium because if the light of the same frequency is shown on each of the metals, the frequency required for silver is much higher than that for sodium. So the frequency will be, will be responded to quicker in the sodium, which has a lower work function, a lower threshold frequency. So then the, the photoelectrons will have a larger maximum kinetic energy in the sodium because it has a lower work function and lower threshold frequency if so that's in the case where the same frequency is used for sodium and silver now last question in a different photoelectric effect experiment blue light obtained from a light bulb is shown onto a metal plate and electrons are released the wavelength of the blue light is 470 nanometers and the and the bulb is rated at 60 milliwatts the bulb is only 5% efficient just make sure what i always try and do in answering physics questions i always try and maximize my understanding of the information given so you told the wavelength of this light you told its power which is energy per unit time and you told its efficiency so the efficiency tells you how much power is used per second or per time yeah so if it's if the bulb is only five percent efficient it, it means it only uses five percent of its power per each in each second 
So, what the question asks us is to calculate the number of photons that will be incident on the metal plate per second, assuming all the light from the bulb is incident on the metal. So, what we need to, in order to find these photons, is that we need to find the energy, total energy emitted by the blue light and then we would have to divide it by the energy contained in one photon of the blue light so how are we going to do this the energy in the so this looking at my notes it was just making sure i understand this information that was given to me and now yeah i was making sure i understand the information that was given to me um, by writing down the um, the wavelength of the light, the power, and the efficiency. So remember, I said only 5% of the power is used per second. That's what the efficiency means. So, to solve the problem of finding the number of photons, I said take the total energy of the blue light per second and divide it by the energy contained in one photon. So, to do this, the energy of the blue light we can find this way 5% of the power gives us 3 times 10 to the 3 joules per second and the energy of one photon we can find with this expression we have the lambda we have h we have c we can find that and, and using this expression we can find the number of photons now the last question without any further calculation write down the number of electrons emitted per second from the metal without any so the number of electrons emitted per second from the metal so the number of electrons emitted corresponds to the number of photons that were incident so if it will simplify your understanding i would think of it this way that one photon kicks out one photo electron so in other words this answer would be the same number of photons that will be incident on the metal is the same number of photo electrons that will be emitted from the surface of the metal so that was a quick lesson quick help on the photoelectric effect i hope it was helpful to you and i hope it will help you in understanding your work for your exam and prepare you to do well um thank you for your time let me know if there's anything you are welcome to share your feedback in the com in the in the comment section you are welcome to like the page the uh, academic coordinates like, share, subscribe. Thank you.